<laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, you're so casual with it. Grand rising, grand rising. Grand ra- afternoon. <laughs> what is the uh, afternoon version of grand rising? Is it like grand resting? Because I think you said that before. I say grand resting when it's bedtime. But oh, like, okay. There needs to be a median. Hmm. I was saying rafternoon, but that sounds weird. <laughs> so, grand, I don't really love that. I feel like grand rambling, like the grand day. Ramb- oh, grand being. Being. Okay, yeah, because yeah, that's very present, very in the present moment. Embodiment. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm on. Per. Especially with it being Easter, too, it's like the body being resurrected, very present, very Literally. transformational, transformational. Oh, we live, we move, we laugh, and we love. LOLs. Y'all, I'm so excited. We are here in the digital respite. The After respite. some time away, we are back. Could never forget you. Could never forget. Could never leave or abandon you. Would never do that. What is what did Rolling Ray say? It never <laughs> gave dead. It never gave. It never gave dead. It never gave that. We were always here. We came back. So, you know, we are excited for today to chat and be cute and talk about art and have fun. Living, laughing, loving, slaying. Loving, slaying on wig. Activating our sleigh today for real. Like, this is really the <laughs> activation of the sleigh. Of our joint sleigh. Of our joint sleigh. Hey! Hi, Stink! <laughs> hey, TT <Titi>, baby! <laughs> um, all the baddies are joining us. Love really? that. What the hell is that? I realize it doesn't notify my followers when I'm... I wish somebody else had my account right now so they could be like, we're live. Like, you we're know... Live. I wish I could, like, signal my... Is there a thing to, like, signal your followers that you're... I think you can invite people to join, like, by name. I see. I will have to learn. I'll have to learn. But, yeah. It's time to spam DM people. I'm spamming. Where are you at? Join the rest of it. True. Yes. I don't want to mess up anything, so I'm not going to touch anything. But I'm, I'm testing here. it. I'm trying it. And I don't care. For those that are just joining, I don't know how far back people that are joining can see in the chat, but um, we have a moderator here just alerting everyone of like what emojis to use. So if something resonates with you today, or if you just want to be cute, you can use our Midwest Connection emojis today, which are the brain, the keyboard, and the spiral, because we're in the digital respite together. So use those. Yeah, use them in combination, use them by themselves, whatever you're feeling. Um, it's just one way for us to connect on our joint sleigh on wig on our joint boots down the house sleigh can i pin the comment okay yes i shall i shall oh right i forgot about the pinned comment function thank you okay now it's pinned so everybody should know um and if you don't now you do Yes. Okay, so we will get started with our little intro in a second. Just wanted to let people join. Yes, I see the emojis being used in the chat. Yeah. Everybody's activating their sleigh today. Everybody's activating their joint sleigh on wig. On period. Our joint sleigh. On wig that. on house, the boots down. On wig on house, on edges per period, sleigh down oh, boots. Per sleigh. <laughs> Play on wig. On wig. Mm-hmm. On yeah. wig boots. Alrighty, so it's about 3.05, so I'm just gonna, you know, hop right in with our mission. So for all who are joining us, welcome to Midwest Connection. Welcome to Within Digital. We are here. Can we technically use other emojis? Of you, course. <laughs> you can, but, you know, the, to be in the respite, it's like using the respite emojis is like how you activate Alignment. your sleigh. Alignment on wig. 
Alignment on the wig boots. <laughs> I was on mother. Oh, mother. Yes. All right, y'all. So you're getting a little taste of what um, within is, but let's just, you know, give the formal kind of mission, the formal definition of, I feel like that rhymed. <laughs> that <but>. did. <laughs> <laughs> the mission, the definition. Mm. I'm so excited to see these numbers, like, hiking up, climbing up. All right, y'all. So within oh, 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 oh. digital. Within digital, what is within digital? So within digital is a digital respite engaging black artists, creatives, and the art curious and curated conversations about art, the creative process, and being black on the internet in the 21st century. So that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here doing. When we're not here, we're on our website, mm. uh, reading playlists, essays, interviews, dialogue, context, all that on withindigital.net. If you look below, you can see withindigital.net. Not really, but if you manifest, thing is believe. If you activate your sleigh. Activate your joint sleigh. Ruby for everybody black on wig. In the respite. In the respite. Um, we're having Midwest Connections, curated combos, articles, interviews, the whole shebang. The live will be saved. You will be able to see it at Within Digital. This is my at sign here. I am activating my joint slate. Yeah. <laughs> at WithinDigital.net. Don't forget dot it. T per. Dot net. And so today during our live, we'll just have some, um, we just want to establish some digital boundaries for everyone, just so you know what kind of space you're entering into. So. Um, first and foremost, this is a space meant for Black people as a priority, um, and we allow non-Black people to attend and, you know, to be involved, but just want to advise people that um, during, like, questions and answers with Black people will take priority because this is a space for us, by us, you know, about us, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try to attend to every comment and question and engage, but if we're unable to do so, we really appreciate you for being here for our first Midwest Connection, yes! Um, and as Bree said, um, the archives for this live and lives going forward and our other combos and other conversations will be archived on within digital what? Dot net. Dot net, period, boots, down the house, wig on T. Um, and so for today, for our chat boundaries, we just want to um, make sure that everybody's aware and you are aware that we are centering blackness and the diaspora here. So any form of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, et cetera, phobias are not allowed. You, you can out, you beat kicked it. out the respite. You're not gonna be able to respite with us. You gonna have to go work. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you will be banned, blocked, boom, bam, bing. Um, and so if you have questions, like we said, there will be a Q&A at the end today. So you have the option of DMing us, commenting that. You can also email us at wearewithin at gmail.com. I think that's our e Gmail. Yeah. Um, eight. Yeah, we are within digital at gmail.com. And yeah, as we said, we have some emojis. So please use the emojis. We've got the brain, we've got the keyboard, we've got the spiral, and you can use them in any kind of combination. Um, and yeah, we're so excited for y'all that you're here. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, I'm Bree. I am an analog collagist slash mixed media artist. I live in Ohio. Um, I am the Midwest and the head knicker in charge. Um, yeah, first, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and my bestie over here will introduce herself shortly. Yes, I am Candace. I am from Cleveland, Ohio, stressing the yo in Ohio, um, okay. as Ohioans do. Um, I'm an art director, photographer, designer, etc. cetera, um, from Cleveland, and I live in Washington, DC right now. And I'm so excited to be here and be with my bestie on live. We're going to chat and talk about art and be cute. And that's what I'm here to do. That's what we're here to do on WIG. Okay. On WIG. Big Midwest things. Cleveland supremacy. Exactly. Cleveland supremacy. Exactly. Love that. Cool. So, okay. yeah. Go ahead. On me. No, you got it. Okay. So today we are chatting with Daryl. D'Angelo Terrell, who is a Detroit-based artist who primarily works with lens-based media, like photo, video, ETC. They're an edu educator, curator, DJ, and organizer, and they've 
received their Master of Fine Arts from the School of Art Institute of Chicago, where they studied with Xavier Simla, Simmons, Ayana Moore, Roberta Fuentes Fahim, and they work under the philosophy of Fubu. This shit is for us, as in like this. Um, they always are thinking about how their work can aid a larger conversation about Blackness, its many intersections, and their work explores displacement of Black and brown people, um, the femme identity and strength, the Black family structure, sexuality, gender, safe spaces for all Black bodies, and personal stories, all while keeping in mind the accessibility of art. So, exactly. for today, Daryl, when you're ready to join, we'll be chatting about how are you entering the rest of it? What do you think, Candace? I um, am entering the respite just like a buzz, a buzz with energy today. Um, so, yes. Hello. <laughs> What's up? Hey, bestie. How y'all doing? We're good. so good. Good, good. We're so excited to see you. Yeah, likewise. Come on, come on, uh, Midwest. I fuck with it. Yeah. Well, you know Yeah. This. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how are you entering the respite today? What's what do you what's on your mind? What's on your heart? Um, um the sun is out. I guess. <laughs> I um, yeah. I mean, yeah. The sun is out. Um, it's Easter, so um, Uh-oh. right now, um, I don't know. I'm like preparing um for a few projects. And for my next residency, so um, my mind is like running a, a thousand miles per hour. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, well, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Everything's good. Love that. Thank you for taking your time to come and speak with us. Book in Disney. You love yeah. to see it. Yes. Yeah. Bree, how are oh. you entering the respite? I am entering the respite um, on fleek, on edges. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited to be here. I'm glad we can connect. I'm glad that we're in the Midwest, the mighty Midwest. I think just with excitement, enthusiasm. Yeah. Yes. Somebody should keep a tally of how many times we say Midwest during this um, <laughs> live, because it actually leads perfectly into our next question, because we're going to start off with, you know, the birthplace, the motherland, the homeland. Um and that question is like, how, you know, how does the Midwest, how is the Midwest central to this kind of world building um, in your art practice? And like, you can kind of just like, you know, give, we gave a little bio, but if you want to kind of talk about yourself a little bit and just how the Midwest is so central to that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for one, I want to say that um born and raised here in Detroit, right? So like, I have always lived in the Midwest, like, only other place I ever lived is Chicago, which is still the Midwest, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when I think about the idea of world building, um, being that I'm here in Detroit, um, for one, we're the blackest country, we're the blackest city in the country mm-hmm. uh, since the 1960s, if I'm correct. Granted, the Caucasians are trying to Caucasian they, they way in here and push us out, but <laughs> not happening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like world building has been extremely important to me, um, as especially as it relates to Detroit, because like um I think of Detroit as a type of mecca, right? Uh, I remember reading um Tennessee Coast Between the World and Me, and he talks about how like Howard University is like this mecca, this black mecca. Um but like I feel like I, I can't remember because it's been a while since I read the book. <laughs> but I can't remember if he was I, I'm pretty sure when he said that he meant as far as like when it comes to like the top tier of black black education or maybe even black culture. However, I feel like oftentimes um, Detroit is neglected in this conversation of it being a black a true black mecca. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, me and a lot of my friends, um, we speak about um, Detroit in future tense. We think we speak about it as if it's like truly the city of tomorrow. Granted, um, in order for us to get to to um, a future space, we have to. Um, we have to like uh, identify and realize the shit that we've went through in order for us to get to where we're going, right? Um, uh, hold on, who said we got mold in the house? And I'll kick your ass out. No, <laughs> no, I think they're talking about um, uh, house. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> not Detroit, not Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> we can put that 
jokes out there like that. Stop. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's so like within my practice, um, like I'm heavily influenced by my upbringing in Detroit. So I'm from the east side of Detroit. Um, I'm a byproduct of Detroit Public Schools. Um, I went to Wayne State University, which is like the liberal arts college. Right. Um, me and some of my friends, we crack jokes like if you want to get an HBCU experience on a cheap PWY, uh, <laughs> okay. go to Wayne State. Uh, or at least when we were there. Because, baby, I was on campus the other day and I was like, where's the niggas? <laughs> but, yeah, like I'm heavily influenced by like 90s hip hop, um, my upbringing in Detroit, right? Um, so with that influence comes... Um, a lot of just, like, observation. Like, I, I'm always observing things. I'm always, like, taking things. That, I feel like I'm a sponge, honestly. <laughs> um, where I'm always just, like, thinking about um, the history of. Um, so, like, currently, I'm technically working on two projects um, that I've been working on for years. Um, one one is under this... Um, one is under the moniker of Dion, which is my, like, high film alter ego. And the other one is pretty new. My, I, I just um, started showing the work. Literally, there's um, three pieces in a show currently in Connecticut um, at Next Haven, the Titus Kupar Project, mm -hmm. um, of a series of work called A Way to Get Gone. So I'm thinking about... Mm -hmm. um, the ideas of portals, the ideas of black liberation through um, like site specific locations and how like these locations, um, how like these portals are only visible to niggas. Mm -hmm. Also, oh, let me close this window because you could definitely hear all the cars outside. <laughs> um, but like really thinking about, um, yeah, think about that, like how um, these site specific locations can aid to a black liberation. And like from that, um, from that question, I, now, I'm now thinking about, like, what's on the other side of the portal. So now I'm, like, really, like, from a foundational aspect, thinking about what, even, like, what could this, like, truly all-Black world be? Um, presence of whiteness, so. Um, yeah. I hope that answers your question. I look crazy. Wow. No, you look good. You look good. That was activation of the joint slay. <laughs> Um, I was looking through your bio, looking through your site, looking at your work, and I noticed that you cite a fellow Midwesterner, Toni Morrison's work, um, Song of Solomon, as one of your, like, great influences. Do you see any commonalities between that piece, um, or Toni Morrison's works and, like, her themes of, like, returning home or, like, flight or, like, other, like, fantastical concepts in your work? That's you um, so I, I started reading, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a person who, like, I'll start reading a book, and then I'll stop halfway through. I never finish books. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'll read until I get something that I need. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm, exactly. Right? So, like, Toni Morrison, baby girl, I'm sorry, I've only read one of your books <laughs> in completely, and that was the blue as high. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, um, definitely, I, um... So within the portal work, um, a lot of the a lot of the ideas, the thoughts is this like I this this thought of taking flight, right? So I um I'm like I've been like I started reading Song of Solomon and this idea of flying, right? And then I started um, digging into some African American folklore. Um, so like I um. I got a few books, right? <laughs> yep. Come on, books. Um, they're like um, collections of African American folklore, but I, I'm specifically buying these books so I can read whatever I can read up about the flying Africans mm -hmm. or Igbo landing, things of this nature, right? Um, and while when we have this conversation about the flying Africans, there's there's like two separate stories, right? So there's the fantastical, whimsical story that we tell our children, but then there's the more darker side of the story, which is kind of what the story is, is like hinting towards, but no one really is, having, is like really um, speaking on it, or at least not in like these type of conversations. They do on like a higher academic level, but I'm not always trying to be there. Like I want to talk to my people, right? Um, so like on the more darker side, the idea of the flying Africans is like they would rather die than be enslaved. So they would kill themselves. So the, the idea of taking flight is to die. Um, and 
the more whimsical side, of course, is like they. The story is like um, I think it's it's tied to High John the Conqueror. He's like on this plantation in the south, and the, like the the slave master and his other chummies are like like beating um, field field workers, and they ask High John like, "Now can we jump now?" And he's like, "Okay, no, hold on, wait." And then he gives them the sign to jump, and like one by one they get up, laugh, and run and take flight, right? Um, and like this apparently happens over a like a few days in which people are taking flight and like on the last day of, of this so odd week they all collectively get up laugh run and fly and there's this idea that they fly into the horizon to never be seen again right um so like I, I, I there's something about the idea of taking flight as a way of of getting free that has like, just like really just taking over my my whole thought is right um so i've just been really looking at that and i was like well what if you know um a series of flights started happening in detroit mm-hmm. so by that i started the portals so these portals mm-hmm. these gorgeous golden portals um that um are are technically performances they're they're technically me like i'm I, I put gold sequence fabric over my body mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. dancing in front of my camera. Yeah. Um, and that's how I capture the portals, right? So I'm thinking of these, um, and, and so of course, in these very specific locations as a, um, a type of flight. Because mm-hmm. like, my thing is like that portal, once you drop through, that's you going beyond the horizon with mm-hmm. uh, space that has never been seen before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do happen to go off on tangents, so. <laughs> um, we're in the we're rest. so yeah. here for we're it. Here. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like love the idea of just like, yeah, like taking yourself from this dimension to the next on your own accord, you know? Because like, I think, you know, a lot of times in a lot of, you know, narratives about Black people, it's like people are being taken out of this world, not of right. their own accord. And so, right. you know, so like, you know, say that this is how we want to do this on our terms to like see beyond this world by creating these portals that are vibrating at a frequency only we can see, only we can engage with is so powerful. And so I really love that. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, okay, so we're gonna pivot just a little bit, but we wanted to talk a little bit about DJing because we know that that's also another form of your practice. So yeah. how do you connect with music? Like, what is that, you know, mean in the context of your larger work yeah okay so um gr- first off detroit is the birthplace of techno music techno music is black i just want to make sure that's known a known fact <laughs> um i grew up in a very i grew up in a household where music was always being played my dad was a dj for um wjlb which is like our big um urban top 40 radio station here in detroit he was a DJ for WJLB in the late '80s, early '90s, and then he stopped and started working in a, in a plant because apparently that was caught, that charge that paid more, and plus he just had to do it, right. <laughs> um, and then, um, so like I've always grown up listening to music. Um, there, like my sister's friends have videos of me at six, like doing the crybaby split and then twerking to like, oh whoa whoa whoa, back up off me, back up off me, right. <laughs> so like I've always I've always been around music. And then growing up, um, I was in a church choir, you know, like, like Snoop Dogg and the rest of them. <laughs> when I got to college, I was going to parties, and I was like, they're always playing trash-ass music. <laughs> it's not playing but shit. Like, this is horrible. Um, and I was like, okay, I really want to get into this. So what I was originally doing is uh, <laughs> me and my friends would smoke in my apartment or campus or in my dorm. And I had downloaded um, virtual DJ or pro DJ or something on my computer. So like we would like smoke and I would start just DJing on my laptop. No control. We're just like me, my fingers, you know, and we will always be just vibing. And they got to the point where like three times a week, like literally like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we wouldn't go to the club. We'd be in my apartment 
You feel me? We would, like, probably go to a museum, hit up, like, this is when good girls go to Paris. Crepes was still in Detroit. We would go get crepes. Mm-hmm. We would hit, hit Whole Foods to get macarons. We would hit, like, Sergeant Pepperoni and get, like, a large pepperoni pizza with extra cheese, extra pepperoni. We would go to my apartment, smoke hella weed, and I would DJ. And we were just like, damn, right? And I realized that there was this, um, there was this sense of joy that came from DJing. Um, not only from me as someone who's DJing, but watching people enjoy themselves to music was like, I was like, oh, this feels like, this was like peace. This was like home. Um, so there was that, right? And then I, I got to grad school and like, I would like make little mixes here and there, but not, I wasn't taking it serious. I was just like, it was just a way for me to like escape, um, you know, the struggles of being one of, one of three black grad students. In, a, in, like, a program of 200 grad students, um, one of two in my photo program at the time. Um, it was my way of me, like, finding a way to escape from making art because for it got to the point when I was in grad school, making art felt like a job. And I was always defending myself, specifically for white women who felt as if I was not, um, who didn't see, see value in my work or felt that, like, my work was not good enough for me to be at this prestigious institution with them. Granted, at the time, I'm 23 and they 55, so fuck them. <laughs> um, but, you know, a lot of that played a part. And then, like, my father one day called me and just, like, in his heart, he wanted to apologize for, like, you know, um, going to prison and, like, not being in my life since I was in sixth grade. And, like, for some, for me, that was, like, giving me um, permission to finally start making work about him. Um, and remi- and re- me remembering that my dad used to have an extensive vinyl collection. We used to play music a lot. He loved to dance. Every family function, he took over the music. Every wedding, he started emceeing. The receptions, he cracking jokes and shit. Um, and I was like, oh, this is a good way for me to get in con- for me to feel some type of connection to my dad. So I started DJing. Um, so I would just, granted, it was always still house parties. It was still always like kickbacks. So I was like the kickback DJ. Um, and then when I moved back home um, in 2017, the first time I moved back home from Chicago, I was in a show and this photographer was based out of New York named Chris Graves. Had asked, we were talking about music and DJing and I was like, yeah, I want to DJ but I don't have a controller. And he had sent me a, a, a small controller. When I say small, I mean this thing could probably fit in like a Telfar Mini. It was small. <laughs> It was like me doing it like this. But I was grateful for him giving me this controller because, like, it felt like a sign. Like, okay, baby, do it, right? So, I, so like, I got the controller. I think I did, like, one party because I moved home. I was home for, like, six months because I was intending to move to New York. But shit happens. And I ended up moving back to Chicago. And I moved back to Chicago. Um, me and my, my best friend, um, Jesus, um, we would, like, practice DJing together, but then Jesus kind of blew up, and now, like, Jesus is, like, living in New York and traveling the world, DJing, like, legit DJing. Um, and then I moved back home again in, like, late 2018, early 2019. And this time I was, okay, yo, I'm a DJ. I'm a study. I'm a study this shit. Um, so I started really practicing more and more. I bought myself a new controller. Um, I really started just, like, investing in... Um, vinyls. So I actually DJ vinyls as well. Um, yeah, I love that. Yo, you want to see me happy? Give me two turntables. Let me go up there and like, yes. let me go. Um, so yeah, so like I uh, moved back home and started DJing. And uh, recently I DJ at a spot called Second Best. Um, and it was great. It was th- uh, this program that they do w- with this amazing DJ here to training, Joseph. Um, and it's called Footloose. And it's meant for, you know, for people to enjoy themselves and dance. Granted, it was opening day. Opening day is like when the Detroit Tigers baseball team starts playing. Yeah, it was wild. White, white people galore. No one was paying attention. But my homies showed up and showed out. Sure. It made me very happy. So I recorded a video. It reminded me again to like when I was DJing in my dorm and just seeing people happy and dancing. Um, Yeah, like DJing for me is just, it's my way of honoring my community. It's my way of like seeing people enjoy themselves, especially like with the last two and a half years we just had. Right. Like Whitney's got here and pop some pussy. (laughs) 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 Um, I'm like, I'm not here for this whole like, 
Like, no. And I think it's so interesting because um, there's this, this young, um, this, this young cat here in Detroit who was like, having a really good critical conversation about like the fact that he's seeing less um, like rap shows, R&B shows, more DJ shows. And I told him, I was like, I think it has a lot to do that we were stuck in the house for two and a half years. We didn't really get a chance to socialize in those type of spaces, right? We didn't get the chance to dance, we didn't get the chance to party. Like there's so many bomb ass songs that came out between 2019 and and now that we didn't get the chance to twerk to in the club. It was a different time. Do you don't realize Kate Lana put out a whole album? Okay. Do you don't realize Chloe Haley gave us <laughs> Unguided Power? <laughs> I was literally going to Don't say even that. get me started. Doja Cat, Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi. Like, the list goes on. And, like, we didn't get to get away from us. We didn't get to really enjoy that. Um, and and in a, in a party dance setting, and now we can, so we're all going out. So like whenever I DJ, I really do prioritize black black people. Um, oftentimes, I'm more so prioritizing queer people and, and black women, um, and um, and like non-binary people and things of that nature. Because like, if you if I'm being honest, we need we need celebration more than anybody else. I love my cis people, but y'all got enough space. Go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kindly, yeah, normally. DJing for me is really just like it's it's a type of community activate activation. It's a type of celebration of of people of community. It's a way for me to hug everyone at once without touching any damn body. Um, so yeah, love that. That, 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 <laughs> that's hot. <laughs> Thank you. Period. Um, moving on. In your bio. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a deep dive, perhaps. <laughs> I'm, gonna say, I'm ready. I'm gonna say. Um, you described yourself as a big bitch in a world of small hoes. Period. Um, sort of like etching into this mindset of abundance and like having rather than like a space of lack. Um how did you like get to this mindset of like opulence and abundance rather than like um a place of like uh aspiration or like lacking like you've expressed before in your other work like I wish I was perfectly happy I happy that you brought that up let's talk that, about it that piece is is how I started to think about myself in a different way mm-hmm. uh, but I wish I was perfectly happy was the very first piece I made in grad school like mm-hmm. that first month. I had two panic attacks. I cried. I was ready to drop out. <laughs> I was like, I want to go home. I don't want to be here. Um, and I made that piece um, and, like, showed it. And, like, my advisor at the time, Xavier Simmons, asked me a question, like, what do you love about yourself? And I was like, oh, right? And I was like, okay. And then I realized, like, the things that I love about myself are the things that I've been conditioned to not celebrate because these things are deemed feminine or for girls i'm really soft i love the color pink my glasses are technically kind of pink um i i like flowers and candles i like being soft i like being held um like i like all of these things that i'm typically deemed as feminine i've always felt an affinity for it um so, like, me, her asking me that question and me thinking about this is how I started thinking about and creating my alter ego, Dion. Um, and with Dion, it's very much just, like, one, identifying um, the things that I love myself. Um, and for the longest, I hated my body. So, um, I am six foot seven. I am 340 pounds. Uh, <laughs> very sassy. Will twerk anybody down right um but these are things so so that i feel like it gives more context to like why i've always felt like i can't i can't um really celebrate my body because like this is about a guy i maneuver and i exist in i'm always in um but yeah it was just like i need to get to a different point. So as far as that line, being a big bitch and worthful of small hoes, I love that you pull abundance from it because it's actually me being funny. It's actually me, it's actually me saying I'm physically a big bitch. <laughs> like, and the rest of y'all hoes are small. <laughs> Objectively. Like, I, it's me like really thinking like, 
like I exist in this world as a body that is so othered that it's almost like what the fuck, right? I exist in a body that you know the trade says is the best of both worlds. Uh, <laughs> I exist in a body that is both uh, that is both seen as a blessing and a curse. Um, this is the body I, I live in. I move in. I exist in. I I thrive in. I got. I got big old, big old titties and I got a fat ass. And like, these are things that like, I'm not supposed to celebrate. Right. And I do. Um, so with Dion, I got to the point where I was like, I'm going to start celebrating um, this body. Um, but even in the act of me celebrating this body, I'm still having conversations about how this body maneuvers through spaces of desire, um, which is something I feel like I struggle with. Right. Like, Again, in this body, um, being in Detroit, Detroit, and I love the Midwest, right? I love Detroit. I do find the Midwest and Detroit, Detroit specifically, to be a very heteronormative city. Um, like I, I did not, I did not learn or grapple with the idea that I was non-binary until I went to. And it wasn't even like, oh, I'm in an academic space where I'm learning. It was, I went to Chicago, and I jumped on Facebook and was looking for a community. And the community I found was one that was very queer, very radical, very um, very non-binary, very, very gender variant. And which now I'm learning about, like, oh, no, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm a he, him. I'm a they them, but I still take he him because I'm just like I get tired of correcting people on the damn time. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's where that line comes from. Uh, being a big bitch in a world full of small hoes, I exude, I exude the energy that is that is uh, I exude the energy that is void of a space of a space here. Mm. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Thank you. Mm, period. I just want to like let that hang in the air for a second. Like I feel like that was really profound. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exude, exude an energy that is void. Yeah, of the space here. Like, that's powerful. Thank you. Um. Okay. So, um, one of our like final kind of questions before we move into Q and A is that um touching on, you know, a lot of your work in your bio makes an emphasis on accessibility in art, so making sure mm -hmm. art is accessible to all of us, like, Black people specifically. Um, and so your project, um, your series Project 20s even calls for, like, makeshift studios to ensure that subjects have a chance to be a part of the project. So what do you say that your favorite aspect of doing the best with, um, you can with what you got, drug or a carry voice, like, what do you say about that? Can you react to that question again? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. yes. What is your um, favorite aspect of like doing the best you can with what you have? So like, how do you, you know, um, yeah, oh, utilize materials? You know, I, I grew up poor in Detroit. It's just, it's just like it's just what we do, right? Um, I'm just that. I'm just I'm, I. <laughs> I grew up in a I grew up in a household um, where um, so I'm the baby. My 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 older sister is 18 years older than me. I was born on her prom night. Um, funny, um, and honestly, it's just I've always been the type of person where I would like want to do stuff, but not necessarily know how to do it or how to get there. So I would teach myself, or I would like find ways to like ghetto rig shit, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's always like trying to, like, what is it, like, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents? Mm -hmm. that, that, I feel like that's a real old phrase. Oh, <laughs> but, oh. yeah. um, but the beautiful thing about it is um, within that idea, there's always community. Mm -hmm. So you always, I, like, and so, like, I, I, was, I was a professor at Oakland University for three semesters. And I always tell my students, like, um, I have an assignment where um, uh, I call it the finesse assignment. You have to go to Michael's and buy stuff, keep the receipts, keep the tags, photograph it, take it back, 
and when you upload the photos, upload the return receipt. Because mm. I'm, because it's to the point where like, maybe you don't have four hundred dollars to buy flowers or buy fake flowers, but maybe you got four hundred dollars to borrow them damn flowers and get your damn money back. Yeah. Then do that, right? I'm, I'm very, I'm very much about, um, about, about that. So like with Project Twenties. <clears throat> It's been heavily community based. Um, I um, started it in Chicago, and like I hit up AMFM, which was um, a art space ran by Sierra McKismic, um, an amazing queer um, curator and um, cultural producer in Chicago. She, she at the time she owned a space that was running off my old apartment, and I actually was like, "Yo, I got twenty five bucks." Can I rich your space out for like a few hours? And she was like, Yeah, no problem. I sent her 50. It was like, She was so nice, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I sat there and like I promoted, like, Hey, I'm at AMFM today. So pull up black and brown people only. I'm taking y'all photos for this project. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's like word of mouth. And that's how it's getting people to come for that. And then I came here to Detroit and um, I hit up this spot called Baltimore Gallery, ran by um, Phil Simpson. Um, this is a gallery in Detroit that, I'm going to be honest, gave so many artists our first exhibitions, our first solo shows. It gave us um, our first places where we curated, um, our first open mics, you feel me, our first parties. Like, it was, like, it was it was community. Um, and, like, the, he gave me, like, two days, and I was shot in the wintertime. I was like, pull up, I'm taking photos. That came out beautiful. And then... Two summers ago, um, I reached out to a space called um, Room Project, which is ran by this amazing writer named Kristen, and it's a community-based writing center for queer, non-binary, and femme people. Um, and I like literally just like set in a vestibule for like two consecutive, no, three consecutive Fridays, taking photos of people. Um, so like when I always bring up. Um, making a way out of nothing, I'm oftentimes saying you have community to make that a way. I think that's important. I feel like as 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 young artists, as emerging artists, as black artists, um, one, we we are not used to seeing people who look like us making art. Mm -hmm. Right? I my my mother used to always go to like the little the little art sales or swap meets and buy like the black velvet paintings or like mm -hmm. the paint cased in resin, right? We still got them in the house. Mm -hmm. She had the shit it's 2022. She still got it. That's vintage. Exactly. I thought we need to get them. <laughs> we, but we might be able to buy another house. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I grew up around that type of art, but never around art kids. So um, I'm always just thinking about like community. How can I how can I pull community in to help me to help me build? Um, it's even to the point now where like I'm like currently working on some video work, and like. I knew like a friend of mine, you um had connection to this boutique hotel downtown. Hey sis, can you help me? She's like, Yeah, I got you. I in email you. Cool. I got two other friends who I know are amazing videographers and photographers. Yeah, can we work together? Sure. Right. And like these people all helped me out the kindness of their hearts. Cause they they, they saw the vision. I have no way to make this shit happen, but we made it happen. Um so yeah, community is just important. Um, that was a ramble on for me to just say that. <laughs> I make it happen with community. Um, and, and the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? yeah. yes. no, I just love, I love um, just throughout the conversation how you've just been threading all of these various Detroit specific references or Chicago specific references or just, you know, mm -hmm. na naming the people and the places and the things that have really contributed to your practice because... Yeah. Um, it's yeah, I think like what you just said just really resonates about, you know, you're not really, you're, you're making something with the tools, the people that you have yourself surrounded by and how important that is to mm -hmm. the creative process. Like we don't live in isolation. We're not meant to make work in isolation. Like we're influenced by our community, by our surroundings, et cetera, et cetera. And so, yeah, really appreciate that. Thank you. I also just want to say, um, and shedding light to AMFM and Baltimore Gallery, um, both these spaces are no longer staying due to gentrification, mm -hmm. um, which is also the reason I chose both those spaces to make Project 20s in. Mm. Project 20s is about displacement. It's about gentrification. And I was like, well, let me go to some spaces that are run by black and brown people, queer people, women, um, 
because like these places ain't gonna be here so this is kind of my way of also immortalizing these spaces because i'm always talk about these are the spaces that i photograph this work in yeah. um so yeah i just wanted to also add that in mm-hmm. that's a really important layer to include as we're thinking about yeah community and how to c- carry legacy and portals and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. really yeah. deep within yeah. that Hmm. Okay. A true midlife connection, if you will. Some would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. So are we, now we are currently moving into our Q and A portion of the chat. If you have any questions, um, put them in the Q and A box, and we will answer them live on Instagram Live in the Digital Respite dot net. Yeah. On wig on period. Midwest. On wig on tea on boots on house edges. Down. Midwest. I think I saw a question earlier um, that was asking how you manifest using music. And I thought that was a very interesting question. Mm. How do I manifest using music? Um... I don't know. That's a that's a good question. Maybe I, I don't know. About, I mean, if if I feel like if if I do manifest doing through music, I'm doing so um, unconscious unconsciously. <laughs> um, yeah. Damn. I got who asked that question? Oh, I don't know. I can scroll up because um. <laughs> it won't let me scroll up. Questions. Thank you. I don't know, but maybe we could go into the. Oh, it was Miss Aimstar. That was their account name, Miss oh, Aimstar. Okay. So you could think about that and maybe get back to that. Yes, thank you. Um, but, yeah, I see another one. Reese underscore Ewing asks, "Can you discuss your landscape work? It's really incredible." Yeah. Hey, Reese. <laughs> um, so my landscape work, as I um, as I said earlier, it is um, because. I- I like really go go back, um, talk about like the in- inception of the making, right? Um, so, pro- um, a way to get gone started off. I had a studio visit with um, one was with my advisor in grad school. Her name was like Ayana Moore, and the other one was um, a friend of mine named Sheree Sh- Ramsey, who's currently I think in South Carolina. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, and Sheree told me to listen to Sunra. Mm-hmm. And to watch Sunrise Spaces the Place. And then Ayanna Moore also brought up me listening to jazz music, but specifically Dorothy Ashby. Shout out to Dorothy Ashby, mm-hmm. classical harpist from Detroit, Michigan. What's popping, what's good. Mm-hmm. Um, but they both told me to look into these artists. And I remember like watching Sunrise Spaces the Place. And there's a scene where he walks into this community space with all these black kids playing pool and patty cake and whatnot he goes into sam he walks into all his sunrise so we all know what that means like looking in the galactic he talks about taking them home like we're on earth is not home for us we are here we are mistreated to be black on earth is for us to be aliens like we're not here so i'm here to take you home and this whole idea of of we're not supposed to be here is what's what, like hit me hard Similar to books, some movies, baby, I get to a certain part and I stop. <laughs> like, I got what I needed. Thanks. Um, so I kept thinking about this idea of black bodies being a myth, right? So originally I was like photographing um, like black people doing mundane things in their domestic space. And when I was photographing, I was like fogging out the room so it was really smoky and lighting it very strategically. It was, they were really beautiful cinematic esque photos that kind of reminded me of like Jeff. I'm not Jeff. Um, Gregory Crutzen, if you black and poor. <laughs> um, and then I was like, okay, I don't want to do this because a lot of artists, uh, a lot of um, my product, my a lot of artists who came before me have used smoke as a as a as a tool to be like this veil between the black body and the white gaze. So there's something about there's something about land a lot, and I got to the point where I was just like, I'm back in Detroit. Detroit is the blackest city in the country. There's a lot of history in Detroit that a lot of people do not know. Um, one, because like it's local history and like kids don't learn local history in Detroit public schools or, or even at a university level. But also, we are going through this heavy fight with gentrification in which 
we are losing um, a lot of this information, a lot of this knowledge. So like, we have place, we have organizations like Black Bottom Collective who are trying to preserve this like history of Detroit. So I just started doing research um, of certain locations in Detroit that have historical significance to a collective Black experience. So I started photographing, like, the first few, like, the, some of the photographs are photographed in the area that was once called Black Bottom. Mm -hmm. So Black Bottom, um, during the Great Migration, a lot of sharecroppers moved to this area because the soil was so rich that the soil technically looked Black. So this was, it was so Black that it was so rich in nutrients that they were able to grow crops. Um, this area was thriving from like the beginning of the Great Migration up until like the 1950s, late, late 1950s, early 1960s, in which local government um, seized the land and bulldozed it and put a it put a highway in a bunch of parks, laying one of America's first highways, <laughs> like smack dab <laughs> of this black community, separating Black Bottom, Paradise Valley, and the Eastern Market, which are um, three very important spaces here in Detroit. Um, so as I'm doing this, I'm now I'm starting to research more and more land. So now I'm able to look, look at um, like um, the history of the 1968 race, race rebellion um, and how that takes how that takes place in more than just um, Claremont and Rosa Parks, but how like how like that took place on Michigan Avenue, on West Jefferson, on Belle Isle, on East Warren, right? But then I got to the point where I was like, this work does not always have to be about extremely site-specific places, especially when I'm photographing in Detroit, because Detroit is black. Okay. Right? Historically, Detroit is black. So I got to the point where I was like, now I can just photograph um, in mundane spaces to have conversations about how we just exist. Um, so yeah, um, that's where the landscape work is. So a lot of, a lot of the photos are site-specific locations. Mm. Uh, I did um, do a residency in Dakar, Senegal. I did the Black Rock Senegal residency with Kende Wiley this past October. And there is, it's interesting because like, my question for this work is always how do I get Black people free? And originally it was like, oh, like these portals led to Africa. That's what, because in my mind, I'm like, oh, you know, Africa, Black people, we home. Mm. Then I go to Africa and I'm looking like, oh, but um, us, us sissies, we can't come here. We got to find some place else to go. <laughs> so um, when I got there was when I started thinking about the idea of elsewhere. Mm. So the other side of the portals is not physically here. It's elsewhere. It's beyond that horizon. It's on the other side of the sun. It's elsewhere. Um, so that, again, allows me the opportunity to really build a type of utopia. And I know... In literature and academic spaces, history, historically, there's a, like in order for there to be a utopic, there has to be a dystopic. But we live in a dystopic, so I'm gonna make this fucking utopic. Um, so yeah, that's where the work is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for these facts and that question. Oh, we got some questions. Go off. I see it. <laughs> we do. The only thing is that we're probably gonna get cut off at four, so we're we will probably repurpose a lot of these great questions in another way because we would love to continue to chat with you. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. We have, I mean, I'll speak for myself. I have just been blessed to, yeah, um, yeah just engage with you and learn more about your work and um, just hear from you. And so, I don't know, Bria, if you want to say anything before we kind of shift. I'm so pleased. I feel like a lot of this was aligned with, like, um, a lot of our intention at the beginning of the meeting of the chat of the respites, like um, original, like rebirth, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. It's getting yeah. Easter. It's getting resurrection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I just feel very refreshed. I, I'm so delighted that we have like this. I'm glad that, like, yeah. Cool. Well, Daryl, do you want to plug any of your, like, your socials or your, like, your cash app, Venmo, et cetera, so people can send you some <laughs> yeah. love? Yeah, I want to go for the fuck out Easter. Um, my cash app is just DDT2009, <laughs> so, you know, bless me. Um, but uh, beyond that, um, my Instagram is blackboyshine, B-L-K-B-O-Y-S-H-I-N-E. Um, my Twitter it's underscore black boy shine all spelled out normally b-l-a-c-k b-o-y-s-h-i-n-e um 
if you follow me on Twitter, you probably see that, like, I'm unhinged. But I also have moments and times where I um, go into rants about about my work at 3 in the morning. Like, mm-hmm. it'll be some obscure ass <laughs> tweet that will end up being a part of my work. Um, so, so, yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to answer one question because someone did ask a question. Um, oh, oh, honey. I, I can just yeah. Someone asked when is my next when am, when am I dropping another mix? Ooh. Um, I am in the process of working on two mixes. Um, I want to drop one um by my thirty first birthday, which is the twenty sixth of next month. Um, and then I'm also going to do one in partnership with a podcast named We Gonna Get Free. Um, that's hosted by Francesca Lamar. Um, so <laughs> we got two mixes coming out. <laughs> Um, but one of them would be a bit more like slow somber, not slow somber, but like more jazz, more jazz heavy, definitely. So, yeah. we are looking forward to that. We'll be sure to plug that on our page, yeah. then digital. Thank you. So grateful for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. It was an honor. It yes, an yes. Honor. Oh, period, Gemini's. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> are here. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much. We're going to close out. Okay. See you later. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> this one a thumbnail. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was cute. Wow. Bye. Y'all. Let's just, I don't know if we can clap. Let's, put, like, let's spam the chat with emojis for Daryl. Like, let's just show support, send them some cash app, send them some love, give them a follow, check out their mixes, check out their projects. Like, run it up. Send the DM. Send some kiss emojis. Right. Just give them a Maybe word of appreciation. Much. A wink. Okay. Oh, wait. I just realized that we can use filters. What you I just remembered that we can use filters. Oh, it's, I forgot to add my other one. Yes. This is how we're closing out, y'all. Um, y'all have a good day. Wait, st- <laughs> ooh, 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 in the digital respite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> Within digital. <laughs> I wish I had that one so we could be together. Wait, I'm just going to send it to you. Um, all right, y'all. So we're just going to do a few little things to wrap up but um thank you all so much for coming out um so just to make sure you know follow within check out within digital.net <laughs> Love how does. Net. Uh, if you have not signed up for our newsletter if you have sign not up for the newsletter up for the newsletter you, not- you gotta Boy. yeah we need we need that so thank you all so much for coming you know the site you know the name you know the face dot net dot net dot net dot net so i don't know well what else we want to leave you with um but check out our playlist listen to into the digital respite on spotify and Mm -hmm. yeah we're here just we're just gonna we're just gonna close out like this I gotta find a filter <laughs> to close up. Ooh. Good night. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is how I'm closing up.